Hi everyone, Reverend Molly here. I want to welcome you to a common sense approach to the Bible. This is episode two and I'm so excited. And I'd like to take a moment before I start to pray for anyone who is tuning in. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for um, the spirits that are listening to this um, teaching tonight about you being the chief cornerstone. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that they leave this video, this episode, learning one thing that they didn't know before that will help them in their everyday walk with you. In Jesus' holy name I ask and pray. Amen. The title of tonight's episode is, Do You Want Me to Die for You? Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. And I want to read to you from the NIV Bible what it says and what this means to us as followers who are trying to build a foundation of walking with the Lord in this earth. It's from Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. So what is a cornerstone? You know, we were talking um, in our introductory video about building a firm foundation. And we want to talk about the cornerstone of any foundation. And this is a definition that I found. In every stone building, one stone is crucial. It is laid first, and it is to ensure that the building is square and stable. It is the rock upon which the weight of the entire structure rests. It is the cornerstone. Scripture describes Jesus as the chief cornerstone of our faith. At 39 years old, I had um, had a fingernail shop that I opened for the Lord to give Him glory. And I worked this shop very hard and I had hired a couple of girls to work there as well. But nobody wanted anybody but me to do their fingernails. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I am really in trouble. And I worked that business for almost two years, six days a week, an average of at least 10 hours a day. And by the time that two years was coming up, I was, I was done. I was finished. I'd had enough. I thought, I can't do that. I phys physically, I can't, just can't do this anymore. I can't keep up this pace. So I moved in, my daughter and I moved in with relatives, and um, they had a separate entrance to their home, um, aside from the house, where I could, nail customers still wanted to come and let me do their fingernails, so they could come in and out without going in the main house. And I used it as a nail shop by day, and I slept there by night. But this is where Jesus really got to me. One night, though, I was just really frustrated, and I thought, God, I couldn't believe that I'd ended up in this position again. I opened the nail shop so I could make a better life for my daughter and myself, and that is not ultimately what happened. So one night, I was feeling very low, and I just thought, oh, and I did this for Jesus, and I can't believe this is happening, and I picked up my Bible. This is the Bible that I picked up. 25-odd-some years ago. And I held it right here. 
And this is what I did, and this is what I said. I pointed my hand to where I thought God might be. I didn't even know if he was real or not. And I said, I will be damned to hell if my daughter's life is going to end up like mine. Give me a hunger and a thirst for your word that I can't satiate with anything else but you. If you're really real, you're going to have to help me. And I finished, and I thought, well, okay. Like, years later, I thought, you ought to be thankful that, that he didn't strike you down, you know, with a thunderbolt for speaking to him that way. So, nothing magnificent or supernatural happened at that time. But I knew I had done everything that I knew how to do. And I thought, well, we're just going to find out if he's really real or not. Like, I'm tired of skirting around all this, thinking I'm doing something for God. And am I? Am I not? What's his will? I don't know. And I determined in my heart, I love Sherlock Holmes, and I thought, I'm going to go after God like I do everything else. Men, sex, drug, whatever it was that I had done in my past, I'm going after God with everything in me, and I'm going to find out if he's really real or not. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I stepped on my yellow brick road, and I purposed in my heart, this is what I was going to do. So at night, I would tuck my daughter in bed, and make sure she was okay. I'd go back down into my little room. I'd pull out my TV tray. You can see I still have my TV tray. This isn't the exact same one. But I'm using this specifically to remind me where God brought me from and what he has done in my life. And quite frankly, it keeps me, it keeps my pride in check. You know, we have, I, have a lot, I have a lot of problems at times with pride. And, oh, wow, look what's happening to me or look what God did. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that again, not walking down that path. Satan's not going to uh, dupe me into getting prideful. So I'm using this tray specifically for a reason. But each evening I would um, get my TV tray out. I put my Bible there. I have a notepad here. and I have my pencil. And I'm like, okay. There were times like I didn't know God from Adam. And I would just like go, speak to me, God, please. And I go, whoops. There go my notes. Let me get my notes. So one night, I'm in the Bible, and I open it to Matthew 10. And I didn't know anything about um, Scripture. Oh, I got, it. he enlightened it to me, or he convicted me, or he did all this. I didn't know any of that. I wasn't around anyone who was teaching me anything. I depended solely on God. No one I was around knew that I had purposed in my heart. I'm going full tilt with this. I had foundationally been around a certain way of thinking and a certain way of living and a certain way of behaving all my life. And I thought, that's not working for me. I'm going this way. So that's what I did. But I opened up the scripture found in Matthew 10. Um... 37. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And I kept reading that, um, those scriptures, and I thought, you want me to lose my life to find it? Like, am I going to have to die for you or something? Like, I don't like that. Like, that makes me feel scared. I don't like it. I don't know what's going to happen on this journey. I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. But I did. I continued to do it. But what I asked the Lord that night was, you want me to put you before my daughter? 
How could you possibly ask me to do that? I had had abortions. She was the only living child I had. And I thought, how could you possibly want me to put you before her? But I knew what it was saying right here. And so I had trouble with that in my heart, but, I, but I'm like, I'm just going to purpose to keep walking. I'm going to purpose to keep reading this. So what I did during the days when I wasn't doing a nail customer, like I tuned into the 700 Club. Practically speaking, Molly, how do you lose your life to God? How do you do that? So I would start going after and listening to other people who were walking with the Lord, I thought, and listening to what they were saying. I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe. So uh, there were a couple of preachers. Dr. Charles Stanley was one of them. And there was someone else um, as well that I would listen to like once a week. And what I started understanding was that I had to get in His Word but I determined in my heart that I would only get in the New Testament. I'm like, I don't even know about the Old Testament. I don't even know what that is. I just, I'm, I'm not going there. Like, just get in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and let's see what Jesus said when God worked the, walked the earth through Jesus Christ. Let's just find out what's in there first. So that's what I purposed in my heart to do every night. But then I would. If I heard something on television or heard a pastor or preacher say something that I didn't understand or I questioned, I would wait till that evening. I'd go to the scripture where they were um, speaking from and I'd start talking to God about it and just taking down notes and writing and putting my thoughts down so I could just try to understand a little. You know, I, I knew nothing. I had been raised in Sunday school and church. And I thought, how is it possible that I wouldn't have known that Jesus Christ was real? I lived right across the street from the First Presbyterian Church in St. Albans, West Virginia. Yes, I'm a West Virginia girl. Yay. How is it possible that I wouldn't know the Lord? I knew Jesus. I knew that God, they're saying God is the Father. Who in the world was the Holy Spirit and how did three people get into one body. Like that was a really big mystery for me. But I started at the beginning. And I was humble in what I did because I didn't know any better. I wasn't attending a church. I didn't feel compelled to go to a church. And I didn't for three years. But I wanted to lose my life to find it. The key in, the, in, this, um, in these verses was Whoever finds his life will lose it. And I wanted to find my life. I call them my PJ days, my pre-Jesus days. I had a beautiful daughter, handsome husband, beautiful home, jewelry, car, clothes. I had a facade going on 24-7 and a 24-7 fake smile. And I was miserable inside. I wanted, he was my last hope to find out what, what was I here for? My life, what am I supposed to be doing? Just, you know, clocking down time until I die? It just didn't seem well to me. So, to begin this foundational firmness that you're going to need in order to to navigate through this life. And life is not getting easier. It's getting worse. The Lord's coming isn't at hand. But we're going to have to deal with Him. In either our lifetime. You know. Or if He does come. Um, the second coming. Um, does come. And none of us knows when that is. And I don't believe in people who are out there preaching. That it's getting ready to come. We're not there yet. We're just. We're not there yet. In my opinion. My humble opinion. But what is inside of you? Do you need to lose your life to find it? Are you spinning your wheel on a merry-go-round of working, 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 working all the time, never having any time? You know, I don't like the way I'm living. Somebody help me. Is that where you are? 
Because God has designed you and you have been created by the Creator, God Almighty, God Most High, El Elyon, excuse me, with something that is unique unto you. What is that? Do you know what your purpose is? Are you happy? You know, I told God at this point at 39, I just want to be settled. I just want to be happy. And He has fulfilled that for me through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Luke 4.18, Jesus tells us, and I just want to read it. I want to read you what Jesus says, not what I'm saying He's saying. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, is on me, because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He set me free from guilt from shame. In the middle of the night, I would be compelled to just get up and just start talking. You know, to God somewhere, Jesus, something. I, it was God. I always called him God, but it was more Jesus. I just went after Jesus. Jesus was the, the person that I knew when I was young. Jesus loves me. That I knew. I, I knew that. So I went, kept talking to Jesus. And I could go on and on and on for a couple of hours. I'd sit Indian style in my room late at night, the middle of the night. No one would ever say, okay, well, your time's up and that's $100 if you'll just leave that at the front, please. Never said that to me. I felt like somehow someone was hearing me and listening to what I was saying. But as I was doing this, you know, have you ever seen the first ghost in um, Scrooge? He comes, he's got all those chains on, he's all bandaged up. I mean, like, that's how I felt. But as I would sit and talk to the Lord in the middle of the night, these chains, I would, the next morning, I would, like, feel free. And I would feel rejuvenated. It was like a miracle to me. He took away guilt my shame, my lack of self-worth. Now, some of this try to keep resurfacing itself over the years, but for the most part, he's delivered me from it. Um, there's still things that I do regret, but I can't go back and change them. And sitting down, laying down, and getting depressed and going to bed isn't going to fix it. It's a matter of get yourself, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, brush yourself off, and keep moving forward. Because you can't go back there and you cannot change that, Molly. Just keep moving. But he has put something inside of you. It's like a Cracker Jack box and there's a prize inside of you. But he will not allow you to dump it into a bowl and get the prize out and go on. He wants more for you than that. He wants character changes. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to have fruits of the Spirit, such as love and joy. You know, and long-suffering and patience. Patience was a biggie for me. Like, when you start praying for patience, be careful. The chains will break for you like they did for me, but you have to want this. He's not just going to rain it down on you. There's no such thing as a miracle fix. It doesn't mean there are not going to be times where he'll bring someone along and, you know, help you. But there's not miracle money. You know, I've told the Lord over and over again, as long as my bills are paid and I have food to eat, I'm good. I'm good. You know, I have a ministry, Jesus Without the Junk, along with my board members. And we have sown over, given over $76,000 to help single mothers with children and families who need our help on Pleasure Island right here in North Carolina. I'm not doing this to get rich. I'm not sitting here asking anybody for money. I'm not doing that. Our, um, as I said in our introductory um, video, this might be a little um, elementary for some people, but if I can sit here with my TV tray the way I started and help give you something else to think about in your mind about Jesus that you didn't know before you listened, 
then I've done what I was supposed to do in this video. Tonight's video was, you know, being submissive to God. Letting Him take you over and losing your life for Him. I mean, I can tell you guys, there are, there are a, lot of, a lot of martyrs in the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd centuries who gave their lives, who knew Jesus Christ were real. The disciples died horrific deaths, okay, for the cause of Christ. He's not asking us to do that. I mean, if he asked me to do that, I'd, I'd have to do it. But he's not asking us to do that. And we've got a Bible that we can open up and read in English. And there are so many translations now that they're taking it and watering, watering it down into things that it never, ever should have been. It's not in the original Hebrew and Greek anymore. I wouldn't have known that anyway. Jesus saved me to be a living witness for him and to give him the glory. He's done so many stunning things through me to give him the glory, to testify he's real. If you'll just turn to him, he will set you free. But you are going to have to take the first step to lose your life to him. And that's the one thing I want to leave you with tonight. Lose your life. And if you will, if your intentions are pure and they're right, you're going to find the life that maybe you've been seeking all of your life, no matter how old you are. If you need me, um, next week we're going to be talking about, so Molly, how do we renew our mind and our thinking so we can think like God wants us to think, so we can function and do what He's asking us to do. We're going to talk about that next week in Renewing Your Mind. If you have any questions, if you have any prayer requests, you can always email me at jesuswithoutthejunk.com. You can call um, our ministry line at 1-910-228-5282 and leave a prayer request. Any prayer requests that have come in have been diligently um, taken before the Lord and interceded over. So with all that being said for tonight, I think I've said enough. Didn't mean to, I didn't mean to go on that long, but I wanted to stress the importance of letting Him have your life so you can find it. God bless you so much, and I'll see you in our next episode. Until then, this is Molly at A Common Sense Approach to the Bible. See you.